Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, since I've been asked to unmute, I believe I may need to get started. Um, is that is that the case? Yes. Oh, talk to him. Hey, Antonio. Thanks hey. everyone for joining us. I am Jessica Berry with the YMCA of Central Kentucky. We're so glad to welcome our parents and our families to our session of Lift Conference 2022. We have a wonderful slate of opportunities for you to participate in. We hope that you engage. We hope you get new information and join us as we celebrate parent engagement in Fayette County. Our first speaker who's going to talk to us about youth wellness, who I think you just heard from, is Antonio Melton. Antonio, please take it away. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. First of all, let me thank you guys for inviting me and for having such a well-organized um, and planned um, conference our, this, um, this weekend. So thank you guys so, so much for that. Um, my name is Antonio Melton, and I am a, a school counselor um, by um, trade, I suppose. Um, and I have been in education um, 23 years. Most of that time has been in Fayette County. Um, and so I'm, I was honored to be able to speak to you guys this um, today about youth wellness. And of course, youth wellness, you know, kind of could, could, could be a, a several things, in my opinion. You know, it's not just one thing. Um, we could, I could easily talk about mental health um, um, exclusively and spend the whole time talking about that. Um, but youth wellness also kind of incorporates that physical as well as some of that spiritual wellness as well. So uh, for today, for the purpose of today, I've kind of generalize a lot of that um, to try to give you a little bit of those three pieces of youth wellness and hopefully it's something that um, will be beneficial um, and if not I'll leave some contact information for you kind of to reach out and possibly explore some additional um, resources and information. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen here. So a couple of objectives for today really is just to kind of define youth wellness for the purpose of today, um, define some physical wellness, mental disorders, discuss some risk factors for those, for those mental disorders, um, define spiritual wellness um, for today's purposes, as well as discuss, discuss ways to improve um, spiritual wellness, um, and lastly, kind of discuss some resources available in Fayette County. Um, as again, um, my name is Antonio. I've been in um, education for 23 years. Most of my time has been as a middle school um, and high school school counselor. I did teach at the beginning of my career and enjoyed that tremendously. Um, currently, I am in the role of a mental health guidance and school counselor coordinator at Fayette County with the student support um, department. Um, and I am currently pursuing a doctorate degree in counselor ed and supervision. So this work uh, for working with youth and their wellness is really important to me. And so I would love to kind of, again, continue that. Um, my greatest joy really um, is being a husband to my wife, Cindy, and to my two middle school um, boys, um, Yoni and Caden. So um, as I, you know, always, when I'm talking to parents, it's a different um, perspective, you know, when I can absolutely relate versus my earlier years in education when I hadn't become a parent yet um, and I was just an educator. So um, I totally can re relate to um, the parenting piece as I am in the throes of it completely right now. <laughs> um, so the flow of the presentation today really is kind of, again, defining it, um, looking at how we can help as parents or things that we should kind of be aware of, again, in general terms, um, and then at the end, wrapping up with some resources that we can use. Um, so the first, first part of this youth wellness is thinking about physical, their physical wellness. And of course, this is the prime of their development. They're growing like weeds, eating absolutely everything in the house. Um, and so it is important that, you know, we kind of, that we remind them to take care of their physical wellness. Um, and then, you know, now a lot of the, a lot of my, a lot of my kids want to spend, spend the majority of their, their time in a really sedentary, um, you know, on, with video games or just kind of like, just kind of hiding, hiding out. They don't seem to get out like I did when I was a kid, you know, kind of <laughs> coming in when the light was on, you know, riding the bike and whatnot. 
Um, and so definitely, I think, you know, as parents, we want to kind of encourage them to, you know, put the devices down to get that physical activity. Um, and so, you know, the, the health uh, Department of Health and Human Services does recommend that, you know, students receive that 60 minutes of physical activity. Um, and that is anywhere between a moderate and a vigorous um, activity. Um, so, you know, walking definitely counts, but, you know, we really are working on kind of getting their, their heart rate to um, a point that it can be beneficial to them. Um, and so not to <clears throat> overlook that or downplay the need for them to, to really get out and to get about. Um, and so things that they can do, of course, walking, biking, uh, intramural activities at schools. A lot of the students will, you know, if they're in public schools or private schools, you know, there are teams available for them to kind of um, burn off some of that energy. Um, and, and a lot of schools are actually incorporating intramural um, sports so that, you know, we can broaden it for so that not just the top athletes can make the team, um, but then all students who want to be involved can do that. And so as parents, we want to encourage them to do that, even if they may not have made the team that they were, um, you know, trying out for, but just to stay active. Um, PE class, um, and I know as a school counselor, a lot of kids uh, dread um, dressing out <laughs> throughout the day, um, especially some of our girls, because they don't want to mess up, you know, their hair and makeup um, and get all sweaty. But, you know, it is important, you know, it's an opportunity during the day for them to kind of get that, um, get their heart rate elevated and to kind of, you know, get some physical activity in. Um, yoga, weightlifting, you know, taking the stairs, any opportunity you can. Um, so, um, so there's lots of opportunities and ways to just to be physical, um, be, you know, get, um, get off the couch, put the game down. Um, and so we just want to continue to um, encourage them to do that. And that's just one piece of, you know, youth wellness <laughs> is staying physically fit. Um, mental wellness. Um, and this is probably my ballpark, um, really, um, more than anything. Um, and, you know, for the purpose of, you know, today, I want to kind of define uh, mental health as thinking about uh, mental wellness being, um, you know, um, mentally healthy um, um, and having, not having a mental disorder or uh, mental illness, um, which is kind of what, you know, we kind of put into the, uh, under that umbrella of, you know, mental wellness, kind of students being able to um, emotionally and behaviorally kind of respond um, in typical ways. So, um, this definition is for a mental disorder uh, or mental illness, um, and it's, you know, a, a diagnosable illness that affects a person's thinking and emotional state and behavior. Um, it disrupts the person's ability to work or attend school, carry out daily activities, or to engage in satisfying relationships. Um, and so, you know, obviously, you know, if our students are struggling uh, with a mental disorder or mental illness, then, you know, that's not all what that's, that's may not be what we consider, uh, you know, um, healthy, mentally healthy, but that's not saying that they're unhealthy, but there's definitely, you know, um, space for us to make sure that we are aware and we take care of that and address them so that they can be as healthy as possible and be able to carry out those satisfying relationships and get through their day. Um, Some of the um, protective factors um, that if we can include these pieces in, these, in our young people's lives can uh, uh, decrease the um, likelihood of them developing a mental disorder and remaining um, you know, uh, mentally well uh, or maintaining some level of mental wellness. Um, and this, again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is not a list that says if we make sure that students have these factors in their life, they will absolutely be completely, you know, top-notch, um, you know, but these are just kind of some, you know, research-based uh, factors that kind of decrease those things. Um, um, so just healthy practices in general, um, students having a high level of self-esteem, um, students being able to problem-solve, um, feeling in control of their life. Again, these are all protective factors, things that we want to make sure that our students can do. Um, um, feeling um, in control, um, avoiding alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, um, having some type of support, um, parental or family support, um, regular attendance at school, and um, regular, you know, academic um, performance, um, having a good social um, support system, 
is also a great protective factor as well as uh, their availability of constructive re recreation. So again, having something that they can do physically, something that they enjoy doing outside of just you know their studies. Um, and um, probably the most important one here as a protective factor is kind of feeling close to at least one adult in their lives. Um, and I think that I always want to highlight that because oftentimes when I'm working with students, I'll ask them kind of, who is that one adult that you would you know, take with you wherever you, you go? Um, and so when students struggle to come up with that one adult that they feel connected to, that's always you know, a, a um, telltale sign for me as a student that I want to connect or get connected. Um, in some way. So um, again, these are just, you know, some of those common protective factors for, you know, maintaining some uh, mental wellness for our, our young folks. Um, and so the third category here, um, if I'm thinking about, as I'm thinking about um, youth wellness, as I'm thinking about their spiritual wellness, um, and, you know, spiritual wellness being defined or looking like, you know, students, um, their ability to kind of find meaning or purpose um, in life um, and living according to their own values, morals, and beliefs. Um, and spiritual wellness doesn't necessarily have to be um, religious necessarily. Um, it just can, you know, it's, it's a matter of kind of mindfulness and kind of thinking, you know, outside of um, themselves. Um, and so I think this is this is huge um, in our community. Um, and, you know, even in education right now, we are um, we're constantly kind of talking to students about, you know, this idea of mindfulness and kind of being able to kind of reset and be present in the moment um, and be aware of, you know, where they are and who they are and kind of the choices that they make um, in that sense. Um, and so these are, that's definitely something that, you know, I would encourage that we can do um, with our young folks to kind of help build and encourage their uh, spiritual wellness. Um, it's kind of to continue to practice mindfulness. Um, yoga, gratitude journaling um, is a great way of just kind of, you know, having them reset and think about, you know, what they're, what they stand for, what they believe, um, you know, getting out in nature um, um, and just kind of appreciating what's around you, um, taking care of yourself, practicing, you know, healthy habits to um, do something for yourself um, and for other people. Volunteering is a great way um, to kind of find purpose and meaning, um, you know, any affiliations with, you know, your, with the religion or a prayer, also a great way to kind of, um, improve your spiritual wellness, um, creative arts, um, music, um, is a great way to kind of find purpose, um, positive affirmations, um, as well as just kind of some family time, quality family time. And so again, none of this is kind of like earth shattering. Like, you know, it's just kind of like reminders of these things do play off of each other. Uh, and as a parent, we're constantly, you know, thinking about how can we, you know, you know, make the best choices and encourage some of the be best behaviors and uh, choices for our kids and still that. Um, and some of these do kind of play off of each other, you know, um, kind of fit, in, but it's all in the same umbrella of just kind of like, you know, youth wellness. <laughs> um, so for, um, for the purpose of this um, um, presentation, I actually have a mindfulness activity um, that you guys can participate in. Um, and so it's actually, I think if this presentation becomes available, you guys will get to use that. Um, and again, it's, it's very common. So I simply just, I think I Googled mindfulness um, and YouTube kind of has these exercises that will walk you through um, that. So here's a, we won't do the whole five minutes, but I'm going to play some of that. <laughs> oh, maybe I won't because I don't think I clicked that. Can anyone hear? Yeah, no sound. Got you. Just a second. Just a second. Sorry about that.
to begin this mindfulness meditation, just let yourself get into a comfortable position, whatever that looks like for you. When your body feels ready, you may gently close your eyes. With your eyes closed, take a moment to tune inwards. First, simply noticing your body. Tuning in to the weight of gravity. The points of contact between you and the surface on which you are resting. What else do you notice? What is it like for you to be in your body right now? As you observe this, you simply accept and allow whatever it is you notice. Harboring no judgment. Just being mindful. Noticing what is with a sense of compassion in your heart and letting it be. Continue to do this now with your breath as well as your body. If you haven't already, begin to tune in to the sensations of breathing. What do you notice? Just observe, accept, and allow. No judgment. Just letting everything be how it is. As you stay mindful of your breath and your body, with a sense of compassion in your heart, Keeping your eyes closed, you allow your awareness to expand to include the space around your body. It's as if you can sense the air around you, the objects around you, and you just allow them to be as you simply are. There's nothing to do, there's nothing to judge. If your mind wanders, that's okay. Don't judge it. Just return your focus to what is. Being connected to your breath, your body, and your sense of presence in the world around you. Everything simply be, including yourself. You now begin to let your attention travel back, becoming more and more aware of physical sensations by rolling your shoulders, feeling your fingers and toes, still being mindful of what is, and taking this present moment awareness with you as you slowly begin to open your eyes back to the world around you. Wonderful job doing this practice. We hope you enjoy the rest of your beautiful day. <clears throat> so um, that's an example of mindfulness. 
Um, and it's almost like, like nap time from you know, the <laughs> garden um, when we used to make time to like take naps so that the adults could break. Um, but again, how it's a great um, way to improve um, spiritual wellness and just kind of, um, you know, having students reset and even adults reset. Um, I find myself, even when I do it, um, that I'm always, I feel refreshed. I feel like, you know, okay, now I can focus on what it is I need to do as opposed to, you know, going all the time and I'm missing that. So it just allows you to be present. Um, so um, so how can you know we get support for our young folks? Um, and you know, in Fayette County, we are fortunate to have a, a nice um, team of support staff um, available to students in our buildings. Um, and so all schools have school counselors or guidance um, specialists. Um, most schools have social workers and we have, you know, college of career coaches, excuse me, as well as um, um, district mental health therapists um, who are available um, in terms of helping students. Um, you know, we have teachers and principals, obviously um, school police officers, nurses um, that are available to help students when it comes to their wellness, their overall uh, wellness, be it, you know, physical, uh, mental, or um, their spiritual wellness, um, that sort of those folks are available to help support um, you and the students uh, to connect to resources. Um, and in the community, of course, you know, we have lots of community partners available, um, depending on, you know, kind of what the, what the area of concern or need is. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out, um, share with you guys, is that Fayette County also has a, um, a website, a resource um, for specifically for parents um, and has a section for students as well. Um, and it actually has a lot of those topics um, available to students, um, you know, and this kind of like evolved out of the um, pandemic um, when we didn't have, you know, physical access to our students, um, but we wanted to make sure that they had the resources at, available at their fingertips to kind of support um, them. Um, and so there are mental health resources here. Um, there are smartphone apps that can help you kind of reset for mindfulness or for, to remind you to be, to get up and do something and allow students to set goals um, to be physically fit or to, you know, kind of, you know, um, whatever it is that they are, you know, charged or trying to accomplish. Um, and so that those resources are available to you guys um, as well um, and divided by topics. So um, I also want, just wanted to share that with you guys as well. There's crisis lines on there. If you were to find yourself in need of that, um, it's there. Um, as well as some um, articles are posted here for, to help support students and their wellness. And that is all I have. Um, so at this point, um, if you have any questions, I would love to try to answer some of them. Um, so I'm going to stop and try to check the chat to see if there are any. Or you guys may have 30 more minutes of um, your life back. <laughs> uh, All right. Thank you, Antonio Melton. Do we have any welcome. questions for him? Because we do have a few minutes. Uh, Mr. Melton, I don't know if yes. you saw that I put in the chat. Can you drop those links in the chat for our parents? I can. Fantastic. And parents, can you drop your name in the chat for us? Because we are going to do a drawing here shortly. But please, let's, let's ask uh, Mr. Melton any questions we may have. I love that he talked about this is not just for youth wellness. It is for all of us. And all of us need to be taken care of. And we, especially as parents, need to take care of ourselves before we take care of others. So any questions? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Melton, for the links. And I see parents dropping in their names. If there are no questions. Thank you for having me. So Mr. Melton, I have a question for you, or another question besides the dropping in the chat. How did you okay. get in, in, how did you get started in your career? What made you um, select this career? Um, wow, I think um, I've always wanted to be a school counselor, um, actually. Um, and I think, you know, it was something about middle school. Middle school was just rough, um, <laughs> personally. Um, and so I think I kind of, um, in retrospect, I wanted 
that connection, I felt like I, if I had had a connection um, in middle school with an adult, um, I think I, I, some things could have been different. Um, and so I kind of made that my thing. I, I was going to be that um, that that adult for students um, in, in middle school as a school counselor. Um, and so here I am. That's fantastic. I think any parent who's on here who has a middle school or has had a child go through those middle school years will say bless you because that <laughs> truly has to be a calling um, to deal. I think about dealing with my own and I can't imagine four, five, six, seven hundred middle schoolers in one building. Yeah. So thank you for what you do and thank you for coming out and sharing this information with us. Parents, can we give him some applause? Take yourself off mute. Aww. Let's give him a little bit of applause or you can clap with the emoji. Um, but we want to show some appreciation for the information he shared with us this, this afternoon. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Melton. Bye -bye. All right, parents, I have a question for you. What will you do to implement something you've learned already today? What will you do to implement something you learned today? And we are giving away a Kroger gift card and a laptop. Thanks to our generous sponsors. As you are typing in the chat, I do wanna say thank you again to our sponsors for the Lyft Conference 2022. They are Lexmark, Fayette County Public Schools, the YMCA of Central Kentucky, Kentucky Skills University, Kentucky Higher, uh, Higher Education Assistance Authority, K-H-E-A-A, -K that's a mouthful, PNC, Be Fool, and of course the Lexington Urban League Young Professionals. So have you posted for me or are you gonna come off mute and tell me what you will do to implement something you've learned today? I see self-care is so important. Meditate every morning, self-care. As a parent, I have, I have college and career readiness on my mind, social emotional learning, model self-care, absolutely. I took some, some notes myself because if we're gonna encourage youth to walk 60 minutes a day as the weather gets warmer, I feel like I need to get out and watch walk 60 minutes as well. And I love during the meditation moment, one thing that stuck in my mind was observe, accept, and allow with no judgment. Observe, accept, and allow with no judgment. I love it. All right, I think I saw Meditation is definitely needed in these times, absolutely. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 in the chat. That's perfect because I have some cards here and I'm just gonna shuffle them up and draw numbers. And I think Anissa is tracking things for me so we know who wins and she'll be posting your name in the chat. Our first drawing is for this lovely gift card. Um, I'd tell you the amount, but I think it's a variety, so I don't want to tell you the wrong amount. So it's a gift card. <laughs> and I'm just going to select one that is number four. Our next drawing is for this lovely Lenovo laptop computer. I'm sure we can all use that, although most of us probably want to throw them away because we're tired of virtual. Um, but I'm sure you can put it to great use. I'm shuffling again. And we're going to pick a card here. Lucky number 11. Jack acts as an 11. So thank you for your attention to Mr. Melton. We are going to move on to our next presentations. I will tell you that uh, Candace Tingle is here to tell us about paying for college. For those of you who have college age students, um, from, she's from the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority, K-H-E-A-A. -A. Um, so parents, if you have a high school junior or senior who has decided to go to college, this is the session for you. Ms. Tingle is gonna help you and your students figure out how to pay for the continued education. A college education is more affordable than you might think. Financial aid comes in many forms and you'll probably qualify for more than one type. This session is going to be great for you because Ms. Tingle is going to help you figure that information out. And then what about me as parents? Sometimes we don't take care of ourselves um, because we're too busy taking care of others. So Dr. John Gregory is here from the Office uh, of Adult Education. 
and he's going to talk to us about taking care of us. I know many of us have heard about the GED, but the Kentucky Office of Adult Education has more to offer us than just that, including free education. Whether you're interested in furthering your education or you know someone who could benefit, this is the session for you. Kentucky Skills U pro provides free adult education services in all 120 counties in Kentucky. They are committed to providing academic and essential skills instruction to help ensure that Kentucky adults get the education they need for long-term job security and high field in high demand fields that provide sustainable wages. So please pick your session. If you want information about both, don't worry because this is being recorded and you'll have access to one or both of them at a later date. Please jump into your session now. Thank you. 